Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, now in our 89th year of continuous broadcasting. Your liturgist is Pastor David Peters of Epiphany Lutheran Church in Racine, Wisconsin. The Lutheran Radio Choir, under the direction of Marie Zelmer, will open by singing hymn number 339 in Christian worship, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, we focus our meditation on our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our Good Shepherd. Our guest speaker this morning is the Reverend Thomas Bauer, who teaches religion, Latin, and choral music at Shoreland Lutheran High School in Summers, Wisconsin. Stay tuned as Pastor Bauer teaches us about our Good Shepherd, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. We begin our worship In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for your sheep. Lead us now to the green pastures and still waters of your life-giving word that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and you reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now sing hymn number 375, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, a metrical arrangement of the 23rd Psalm. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. 
Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fourth Sunday of Easter is traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Listen now to King David's beautiful and beloved 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson will serve as the sermon text this morning. It is written in the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10, beginning with the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let us join in confessing our baptismal faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now sing hymn number 360, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He brings me down to life. In pastures green, he leadeth me. The Oh, so- 
Our Savior Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Dear members of the Good Shepherd's Fold, I will never forget my first trip to the Garden of Gethsemane located on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. The road that day was crowded and noisy as several tour groups were trying to out-talk each other with useful information for their respective groups. At the same time, men and children cried out to the tourists to buy their assortment of trinkets and food. Behind us was a Bedouin shepherd leading his flock of sheep up the hill, and in front of us another shepherd was leading his flock down the hill and street. At the entrance, sheep began mingling with each other and with the people. The sight and sound of people shouting and sheep bleeding was almost comical. How are the shepherds going to separate their sheep, I thought. Quite easily, I found out. Each shepherd simply walked away from the crowd and started talking, calling to their sheep to follow. And one by one, the sheep separated from that ovine mass and followed their shepherd. And without even stopping for a head count, each shepherd simply continued on his way. My language skills were not good enough to know if the shepherd called the sheep by name, but shepherds are known for identifying each member of the flock by name or characteristic. Jesus says he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. His sheep follow him because they know his voice. Is it any wonder then that on this Sunday designated Good Shepherd Sunday that we turn our attention to the voice of Jesus who calls us to follow him? So let's make it personal today. Listen, the shepherd is calling you. For most of us, we first heard the voice of Jesus in the gospel that was connected to the waters of baptism. The Holy Spirit brought us out of spiritual death by making our hearts beat with the new life of faith and by causing our ears to hear the gentle voice of our risen Savior. Throughout our lives, our ears have been trained to listen to the voice of Jesus as we learned about his love for us and the whole world through the words of Holy Scripture. It is important that we listen and concentrate on Jesus' voice in the Bible because we live in a world filled with the chatter of unchristian worldviews, the cacophony of materialism, and the clatter of sinful pleasures. Like that busy intersection at the Garden of Gethsemane, all those noises can easily drown out the voice of the shepherd. Jesus' words in our text reflect that very concern. The Pharisees and teachers of the law spoke loud and long about their views of salvation and their hope of eternal life. And it had to do with how righteous and good you were, how well you followed their man-made rules. Jesus said about them, they tie heavy loads and place them on men's shoulders. In a stern and forceful way, he accused the Pharisees of not knowing the voice of the Father anymore. They were the thieves and robbers who, by trickery and force, were stealing souls from the flock of heaven and emptying the lives of their listeners of the hope and joy and fullness that is found in the gospel of forgiveness. So it is today. Teachers of religious philosophy today want us to believe that God is loving and that he accepts anyone who is sincere and lives to love their fellow man. They tell us, all religions lead to heaven. Just be a spiritual person. Listen to your heart. Find your personal fulfillment in what you do and believe. But in the meantime, the voice of Jesus says, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. And a few chapters later, he will say to us, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So listen to the shepherd's voice. The cacophony of materialism tells us that the one with the most toys wins. I so often hear the youth at my school talk about the pursuit of their career based on how much money they will be able to make. When life is about chasing riches, 
The pursuit never ends. A very famous rich man was asked once if he was satisfied with his wealth, and he replied, No, I always need one dollar more. Against that, the voice of Jesus says to us through the Apostle Paul, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And the clatter of sinful pleasures tells us to live however we want. Why should a 2,000-year-old book determine our morality today? As long as you are happy and able to love the way you want to love, as long as you don't hurt anyone, don't let that old book fill you with guilt. And because out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander, We find it too easy, don't we, to listen to all of those wrong voices. Yet Jesus quietly and confidently speaks to us and says, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Listen, the shepherd is calling. I heard a story once, I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes a point about an orchestra director who was angry at his symphony for playing a note out of tune. After his boisterous rebuke, silence followed. And in that moment, he heard that out of tune note in the buzzing of the lights above him. You know, Satan and our sinful flesh in the world don't always scream at us to follow them. Sometimes they whisper their temptations. When you hear them, Can you tell that they are out of tune with what your shepherd is saying? Your shepherd is calling you. Can you discern his voice from all the other noises and distractions of sins around you? Remember, the thief comes only to kill and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. What a wonderful, undeserved invitation. Why should we, who mess up our own lives with our sins of neglect, our sins of flat-out disobedience, our sins that come from fear and doubt and mistrust, be so blessed to be given life to the fullest measure? But wait, don't let your sinful heart and mind distort these words. How easy for the flesh to say, cool, Jesus is promising me a full life, a great job, a big house, a perfect family, a boatload of friends, and a great retirement account for a really long retirement. How typical of the voices of the world to make us think only of this world. But friends, Jesus speaks heavenly word to us. I can't help think of St. Stephen who was described as a man full of the spirit and wisdom and full of God's grace and power. His was a full life because he served as one of the deacons of the early Christian church whose life was devoted to serving others. His was a full life because he was not afraid to speak the truth about Jesus, even though it cost him his earthly life. But in the end, His heart was filled with joy as he saw his Savior in all his glory before his eyes closed in death. Like Stephen, you and I have heard the voice of Jesus as he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. A full life comes from knowing that when Jesus lived that perfect life on this planet, And when he died on the cross in the courtroom of God, he earned forgiveness for all of our sins. He gave us his righteousness as a robe to wear when we stand before our Father in heaven someday. We hear Jesus say to us, Go and make disciples of all nations, and you are the light of the world. And we know that our life from the moment of our birth to the second we die has a purpose far greater than the accumulation of wealth. We are his ambassadors charged with living and sharing the greatest message the world has ever known. To say to people, Jesus is the world's true hope 
and he is your savior from sin, death, and the power of the devil. And he fills our life with opportunities to reflect his light in the world. We hear Jesus say, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Life for us is full because all of our needs will be provided, even if it means that manna has to fall from the sky for our well-being, because that's the loving care of our good shepherd. You know, life is like that moment at the entrance to the Garden of Gethsemane, isn't it? Lots of noise, lots of chaos. It can be the noise of temptation. It can be the chaos caused by the guilt of our sins. But you and I have been redeemed for a far greater purpose than giving in to the noise and confusion of the world around us. Listen, your Savior is calling you. His voice cuts through the clutter of this world to offer you a place of safety at his side in the forgiveness of sins. His voice directs your path to a full life. So read his word every day and believe it with all your heart. That's his voice, the voice of your good shepherd. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of Pastor Bauer's sermon. If you would like a free copy or if you'd like to sponsor one of our weekly services, please write to us and if possible, send your tax-deductible contribution to the Lutheran Radio Committee, P.O. Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. We'd love to have you check out our website at www.lrcsonline.org. You have been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service coming from the chapel at Wisconsin Lutheran College. This is Pastor David Peters encouraging you to fear no evil as you follow Jesus Christ, your Good Shepherd. The Lutheran Radio Committee will now close by singing hymn number 277, God, We Praise You. May the Good Shepherd bless and keep you and fill your soul with peace. God, we praise you. God, we bless you. God, we name you sovereign Lord. Mighty King who made us worship.
The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.